how does this first international trip of President Biden compare with that first trip of his, some of his recent predecessors? Well, if you had to look at the line of where the U.S. trips, as you mentioned earlier, it sort of sets the tone of what they're going to be planning in terms of their foreign and global affairs. And the majority of the U.S. presidents throughout history have gone to areas that are physically close to the U.S. in terms of geographic distance. Mm -hmm. We're talking about Canada, Mexico. There were two presidents that sort of went a little bit further. Theodore Roosevelt ended up going to Panama and Calvin Coolidge went to Cuba. But then again, not just close in distance, but also close in terms of alliance. A lot of the previous presidents went to the UK as well as the EU. Now, Donald Trump was the one who sort of broke away from that going to Saudi Arabia, if you can remember that four not years sure. ago. You can't forget that His trip. first trip in the Middle East. And it seems that Biden is going back in terms of keeping by the book the same way that previous US presidencies have by making that first trip to the UK as well as the EU to sort of make sure that he can shore up alliances and solidarity there. So how does that tell us about, what does that tell us about President uh, Biden's foreign policy compared to uh, the uh, parameters that were set by President Trump? I mean, a lot in that case. A he's, he's a lot more Where by the book, begin? less conventional, I would say, or more conventional than Donald Trump and a little bit more confrontational than Donald Trump. But the whole point of his visit now to the UK and the EU is to put America, as he keeps saying, and put America first or America back on the stage as opposed to uh, Donald Trump. Donald Trump's thing, which was America first. They're very much moving away from that. His policy is more America's return to the global stage. We're here as a reliable partner, and he's definitely going to have his work cut out for him, considering the fact that there was sort of that break in alliances between the US and the UK, as well as the EU under Donald Trump. He's now going back there to make sure that they know America is with them. They're siding with the alliance, not only visiting the UK and the G7, but also moving across to NATO, making sure that the security matters are all uh, together and in solidarity there, and then moving to the very end in Geneva, where he'll actually be meeting with Vladimir Putin. Right. So give us a, a, a sense. We saw the meetings. You mentioned the importance of the UK. We saw, as you were speaking, him uh, with uh, uh, Boris Johnson and their wives, looking getting along swimmingly, it seems. Uh, talk about that relationship, the importance of that of President Biden with Boris Johnson. He's also going to be meeting the Queen. Well, it's a bit of a, I would say, an awkward relationship. We have to remember that in the past, Joe Biden has actually called Boris Johnson a, phys a physical and an emotional clone of Donald Trump. But it does seem like that's water sort of under the London right. Bridge because they do seem to be getting along. Biden even cracking some kind of a joke apparently in their meeting that, you know, they both ended up moving upwards in terms of their wives and scoring, you know, wives that are much better looking as well as much more intelligent than them. And uh, of course, you had Boris Johnson replying that because of that comment, he's not going to disagree with anything Biden says at the G7 summit meeting. So there is friendly ten uh, relationship there. But we also have to remember that the alliance between the US and the UK is one that goes back centuries. Right. Very, very close relationship to the point that they even were fixing up a charter that was signed the last time 80 years ago in order to reaffirm that alliance and obviously revamp it and make it more towards the 21st century.